Now, just to be clear, I have no intention of quitting the wedding business as a DJ. Okay, just I'm going to get that out of the way right off the bat. This is kind of an exercise in empathy today because I've seen a lot of posts on social media and even gotten some calls from some local pals where they're saying, look, I'm done with weddings. I'm not going to DJ weddings anymore. And it got me wondering why, you know? So I asked the question on social media and I got, you know, well over a hundred answers. Now, you know, granted some of them had to do with, well, I'd never quit weddings or actually I'm quitting schools, but most of them were on point. They were actually talking about, you know, reasons why they've stopped doing weddings. And after reading all of them, I tried to break it down into, let's see, I guess five categories. Some of them are very related to each other, but I thought I'd go over them and I have them written down in an outline here, so I'll be glancing over here once in a while to give you, I guess, the five main reasons DJs are quitting the wedding business. Reason number one would be artistic and professional integrity. Let's talk about the artistic part first. Now, if I think back to when I started DJing, it was 1984, believe it or not. I started doing weddings in 1989. Now, in 1989, I had no interest in weddings at all. I didn't like the music that was played. I really didn't like the hours. I didn't want to play for the clientele that was there. But it was good dough compared to, you know, DJing a skating rink or, or a nightclub. Made quite a bit of money. So I did it for the money. <laughs> I grew to like it, but... Yeah, I wasn't into it artistically. So if you're that DJ who's into EDM or scratching or hip hop or whatever, and you're doing a wedding reception where they want you to play old time rock and roll, I understand why you might not want to do this anymore because it's not artistically what you're interested in doing. And I understand. But professionally, how can that be compromised at a wedding? You have the recipes for how to make an event successful, yet your clients just want it their way based on their whim. They don't necessarily want to listen to your expertise on things, how maybe to structure things, how maybe a night with Metallica might not be the best for a mixed crowd that they have there. If they want a successful event and they want people to stick around, Maybe Megadeth isn't the thing to play all night long. You get what I'm saying. You kind of want to ignore your professional advice. And it sabotages the event ultimately. It looks bad on you. And I understand why that could be a big reason that you'd want to walk away from DJing wedding receptions. Two would be, in general, the people. So let's talk about the client first. Like we said, sometimes they just want to make this up on the fly and you have to somehow make it work and sometimes their expectations are very unrealistic. Now another problem with the clients that I've noticed is communication in general because most of the brides that I'm working with not all but most are young you know they're in their early to mid 20s and they don't want to do a phone call they're deciding how they communicate with me. Maybe it's only text. Maybe it's only email. Maybe it's only some kind of messenger that I have to download to communicate with these people. You know, we should be able to dictate how things are done as far as, you know, how we put things together. What procedure that we use to, you know, put these events together. Yet. Yeah. They want to make it up themselves. They want to do what's convenient for them. They really don't care much what you want to do, even if it's in their best interest. I just went through this last week. Could not get this bride to talk to me on the phone. It was text only. She would only email with the agent, but she would only text me. It was really bizarre. But that does make it hard, and, and I understand how frustrating that can be. Uh, and, and the other thing that I've noticed a lot is that completely rational, intelligent human beings can become completely irrational on their wedding day. And I'll give you an example. 
let's say you have a client that wants to do an outdoor wedding reception and you have an outdoor wedding reception rig. I have one, it's battery powered. It's very cool. You can get married in the middle of a cornfield on the 18th hole of a golf course and I don't need any extension cords or power available to me. However, rain's an issue. You can tell them I need you know, ample coverage just in case it rains, also need it for the elements, but that doesn't mean they're gonna provide it. They may dismiss that. You could refuse to do it, but then you're really the bad guy because you wouldn't do their wedding ceremony as you agreed to do. And then there's that chance of rain where a rational human being would say, you know what, there's a chance it might rain today, so we probably shouldn't have this outdoors. We should go to our backup plan indoors. But you know what? Let's be positive. It's going to be fine. You know, if we think negative, it's probably going to rain. So let's think positive. And let's just hope it doesn't. Let's pray on it. Well, can you pray on my DJ equipment as well? And can you put some kind of deposit down to cover it in case it gets drenched? Or we get caught in the middle of 100 mile an hour winds because that's what it calls for when you're going to be getting married or there's a high chance of it when you're scheduling your wedding ceremony outdoors. It's crazy. I mean, I just went through this with my nephew last weekend. Yeah, they made the call on Friday to bring it indoors. Unfortunately, they really could have had it outdoors. It was turned out to be a beautiful afternoon, but there was a chance of rain. They were very rational about it. My nephew and my now niece decided to get married in the rain. We talked about this, but it didn't matter to them because they had chosen the venue based on the outdoor ceremony spot. So rain or shine, the day of, they decided they were going to do it. Luckily, I had coverage. But if I hadn't had coverage, there would have been a big problem. So, yeah, that's probably a real valid reason to not want to do this anymore. I completely understand. Oh, yeah, wedding guests. Let's talk about them for a minute. Sometimes you get drunks. I hate dealing with drunks. I understand that you get this in bars too sometimes, but I, I really can't stand it. You don't get it at school dances typically, you know. People are at least sober. But at weddings you get drunks. And you get that bridesmaid that comes up and says things like, that bride wants to hear this, or the bride said this, or the bride said that, which is totally not what the bride said. Sometimes they get drunk and lie to you to get you to bend to their will. And I understand how that can get so incredibly annoying and frustrating that you just wouldn't want to deal with it anymore. And if we're going to talk about people and a pain in the butt at events, we have to mention wedding coordinators. And before I get into this, if you are a wedding coordinator or you know a wedding coordinator or someone you love is a wedding coordinator, I'm not suggesting they're all monsters. Okay? There are some great ones out there. I just worked with a great one last weekend. But some of them aren't. Some of them are inexperienced. Some of them, for some reason, neglect to coordinate with the other vendors. So I'm not sure what they're coordinating. They show up the day of with a list of demands that they've made up that don't always really benefit the event as well as what the other vendors have in mind to do. Does that make any sense to you? I do timelines. I plan this stuff. I've got all the info. And then a coordinator comes along and has something different. And I have to go through this with the coordinator. And we have to see what conflicts we have. And hopefully we can resolve them. But the coordinator really has it in their mind sometimes that they're the boss. And they want things their way. And you got to fight with them. And you got to go to the client. And you got to work it out. And it's a pain. I understand why you wouldn't want to deal with these people anymore. And my favorite is the surprise coordinator. You don't even know there's a coordinator until you show up the day of. And there they are. And you're like, oh no, what's on their agenda? I get it. Let's talk about time. Time is a big factor in this. One of the biggest reasons people cited for quitting this is how long weddings have actually gotten. Like I said, I started doing this in 1989 with weddings, and at the time they were four hours long. We showed up during dinner to set up. Now, it's crazy with this time. We're showing up for early ceremonies. 
and sometimes the remote ceremonies. Like I said, I've got the battery powered system. Plus they're looking at six plus hours sometimes for the reception. Oh, we want to start at five, but we have the hall until 12 and we'd like the option to go longer. It's a long day. I'm getting up in the morning to do something that I'm not going to be finished with until midnight or after. It's exhausting. I have a friend who DJs with his wife. It's a husband and wife team. And they've been doing this together for well over 25 years. And recently, she's put her foot down and said, you know what? I'm not doing these long events anymore. Forget it. So my friend has said, all right, well, then I guess that's it. We're going to focus on school dances and general parties. And if anyone inquires about a wedding, I'm going to tell them, hey, look, we're willing to come in for whatever it is, four hours, five hours, but that's it. That's the block that we have to offer you. You can take it or leave it. He's actually had people take this. They said, okay, yeah, that's cool. Four hours is good. So he's still doing weddings, but he'll only do it if the length of time works for him and his wife. And I totally understand that. That makes sense to me. And then, you know, the one thing about time that I think all of us have experienced who do weddings is the time we spend in event prep. This is timelines. This is meetings with the client. This is text emails, changes to the program, changes to the wedding party last minute because somebody dropped out. I know that when I put it all together with performance time and prep time, sometimes it's 40 hours plus. Some of you look at me and say, that's insane. I never take that long to plan an event like that, but it works that way in my world. And I will also add, you know, when it comes to the length of events, that there are places in the world where four hours is still reality. I was talking to somebody last night and they said they knew somebody in like Iowa or Montana or something where they still do four hour weddings, but that's not the reality here. <laughs> that's pretty old school to, to do them short like that here in the US. I know in Europe, they go all night sometimes, but here in America, it varies depending on where you are. But I'm, I'm typically a six hour reception guy, but sometimes they do indeed go longer. So when you take all that time that you have to do day of with travel setups, sometimes multiple setups, breakdown, performance, on top of all the prep time, it's 40 hours easily sometimes. And a lot of people just don't want to put in that time anymore. Now the one thing when it comes to time that is kind of new is that coming out of quarantine, a lot of DJs have really enjoyed their time with their family and their kids. And they want to keep doing that. It's like, wow, who knew that you could take a weekend and spend it with your family? Especially when something like a wedding reception is going to take most of your Saturday with travel time and all that. Yeah, I get it. Some people are just opting to spend that time with their wife and their children or their mothers or their fathers or their friends or whatever the case might be or spending that time doing a recreational activity that they'd rather do than going out and DJing somebody's wedding. Totally get it. Now if you wrap that all up, stress was a big reason for leaving the business. Of course. Yeah, all this stuff is stressful or can be. It's time. It's just this frustration with not being able to do your job without somebody coming in and telling you what's what when they really don't know what's what. It's eating time from your family. It's the feedback you get from your family. Hey, we never get to do these things on the weekends because you're always working. Stress is part of being a wedding DJ. It's a big part of it. And if you've had enough of it or you're not doing your stress management as well as maybe you'd like to, yeah, leaving this is, is probably the thing to do for you because stress is very bad for your health. And the last reason, which I guess stress could be a part of this too, is the money or the compensation for the efforts that you've put into this event. If I look here, Underbid has been something that people have talked about. Hey, you know, I'd love to do weddings, but I keep getting underbid. That wasn't a big one, though. That was kind of a minority. 
there were also some DJs who said, look, I'd love to do weddings, but nobody will hire me. Well, that's not that you're quitting doing weddings. This, weddings have kind of quit you. You know, there's something you're doing where no one's booking you. Maybe you're priced out of your market. Maybe you're priced too low and people are saying, hmm, what's wrong with this? I know a guy like that. And he doesn't understand why he's not working. I know why he's not working. There's a lot of reasons. But he doesn't want to hear it. He wants to do things his way and it is what it is. He is where he is. He is the exception to the rule. But most of the time, it's compensation for the time you put into this. It's not enough. And that makes sense. I mean, if you think about what you charge, if you honestly think about what you charge for an event, and then think about the hours you have invested, minus what you would charge fair, full retail price, like maybe like a 5% for your equipment rental to the event, sometimes it just doesn't work out. We're really getting paid a lot. And that kind of goes back to the time thing. I mean, 40 hours might even be a modest estimate. It could be 60, it could be 80, it could be more. I know that I work so hard on this, not only doing the videos, but putting events together and trying to help people out. It consumes my entire day, from the time I get up to the time I go to bed sometimes, unless I take time to go do something else with the family or for myself. So yeah, although, again, I am not quitting this business, I definitely understand why someone would. And that's called empathy. So, that's it. That's my video. It's a long one. So I'm going to edit it and upload it and invite you to let me know your thoughts on this. Have you recently quit? If so, why? Or are you sitting here still scratching your head? Why would anyone want to quit DJing weddings? They're wonderful. Let us know in the comment section. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you so much for tuning in. Practice and enjoy.